Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and in this video we are going to draw a really cute teacup in Procreate. And make sure you stick around until the end of the video because I'm going to show you a super easy way to animate this team. So create a new canvas and let's get started. The size of your canvas is totally up to you. I personally am using a canvas that is absolutely massive as you can see here it's 50,000 uh, 5,000 per 4,000 pixels, sorry. And the reason for that is just because I am using the pre-textured file, one of the pre-textured files that comes with the Ultimate Brush Bundle. So as you can see here, there's some sort of a paper texture. But yeah, uh, I mean, honestly, the size of the canvas is really totally up to you. And once you have your canvas, go ahead and create a new layer and you're gonna rename that layer to Base. And for the color of the cup, you can go with, honestly, whatever you want again. Um, and same for the brush, you can use a brush from the inking panel. Uh, I'm going to be using a brush from the ultimate pencil because I do want to have a little bit of pencil texture. But yeah, you can really use any type of brush that you want. This tutorial is not really that much about the texture or like the medium. It's much more about the shape and the animation in the end. So if you have the big brush bundle, which by the way is always linked in the description below along with a promo code just for you guys, you can definitely play and pick any medium that you want. Like this would look really cool in watercolor as well and it would be pretty much the same technique. And at this point, all we're doing is we're drawing the shape of the cup. So you can see here, I just went with a U shape and then I flared out the edges at the top a little bit and added a little base at the bottom and a handle but you can really go with any shape that you want seriously experiment find something cool and once you have the outline you're just going to fill it with color drop and depending on the brush you use you might have to adjust the threshold a little bit so the way to do that is just keeping your pencil on the screen and then moving it from uh, the left to the right until you fill in your shape but not more than that and if you have some weird texture, go ahead and duplicate your layer by sliding it towards the left. And then you can merge them by just squishing your fingers together. And that should eliminate all possible weird texture that could have been hidden in there. You're then going to create another layer, put it below the base and rename it to plate. If you want to have a little, a cute little plate below your cup. And basically it's the same technique here. It's just a different shape. So you can go and create an, an oval shape and then fill it in. Again, you might want to duplicate your layer and merge it just to make sure you don't have some blank spots. And you can even use the error tool, set it to distort and just kind of rework the shape a little bit and put it exactly where you want it to be. And at this point, you might want to make this plate a little bit darker. So you can just select a darker version of your color and then drag it on top of the plate and you should be good to go. Great. So now we're going to add a little bit of texture or at least like shadows, whatever you want to call it, because this looks pretty flat. So go ahead and create a new layer, set it as a clipping mask and rename it to textures. And what a clipping mask does is basically everything you're going to draw on this textures layer is going to stay within the shape of the base. So that's super useful. You don't have to worry about erasing or anything. And you're going to select a darker version of your main color. And you're just going to, depending on the brush that you're using and depending on the feel that you want here, I'm going with something very like super quick because I wanted to have that like sketching line effect. But basically you're going to separate the different elements of your cup. So I'm separating the handle, I'm separating the, separating the base with again, like really quick little lines. And that adds a lot of dimension. It just makes the cup feel a bit more interesting. And you're also going to add a line for the rim of the cup. And you might want to duplicate that line as well. Just make it feel like there's some thickness to the cup itself. You're then going to do the same thing for the plate. So creating a new layer, setting it as a clipping mask and rename it to textures. And for the plates, I like to keep it really, really simple. So I usually tend to do just like a little ellipse in the middle to show that there might be some like a little depression in the center of the plate, like, you know, a traditional plate type of shape. <laughs> but you can experiment and have more fancy plates or you can even just skip it all together if you want to have a plate that is just like one straight or like one slab of ceramic or I don't know how to describe it, you know. You can, you, you can just omit this step if you want to have a flat plate. <laughs> So this is starting to look good, but we're missing a very important part of the teacup, which is the tea. <laughs> so above the base, below the texture, go ahead and create a new layer, which is automatically going to be a clipping mask and rename it to tea. 
you can pick whichever color you want your tea to be. I'm just going with a normal brown caramel color. And all you're going to do is with your same brush, you're just going to draw kind of like a little bit of the tea poking out from the top of the cup. So the way to do that is you're just following the same curve as the outside, like top edge of your cup. And then you're filling that in basically, super simple. And you might want to add a little bit of dimension and movement to your, your tea. And the way to do that I found in a very easy way. So just go back and select like a cream color, not a pure white, just a cream color. And to draw some sort of a spiral in the center. You don't want a perfect spiral, otherwise that looks really strange, at least in my opinion. But just adding these little thin cream lines really make everything look so much more interesting and like just yeah just just interesting so <laughs> once you have your tea layer complete go ahead and create a new layer this one is going to be between the tea layer and the texture layer which means it's also going to be an automatic clipping mask and this one you're just going to rename it to details and on this layer you can draw whatever you want uh, but we're basically drawing stuff to make the cup itself more interesting because right now it's just it's like plain solid color so not super fun i'm just going with the same cream color that i use in the tea and just drawing some little patterns so i'm drawing her hearts and cute little stuff because that's the mood i was in when i filmed that video but if you want some inspiration and want something a bit more wintry uh, you can go and watch my uh, hot chocolate tutorial which i will link in the description below and also add it in the annotations or you can draw really pretty much anything you want on your cup you can draw uh, like if you're drawing with watercolors, you can use like the cactus watercolor tutorial or you could draw your own little characters from the cute character little series or flowers, like so many different things that you can draw on this cup. So just experiment, have fun and create something that feels like you and it's just going to get a really personalized result in the end. So at this point, we're almost ready to draw and animate our steam. The last thing we have to do is just group all of our layers. So to do that, swipe them towards the right and then select group. And just for good practices, go ahead and rename your group to cup. And at this point, you can always use the arrow tool to kind of tweak the shape of your cup a little bit. If you want to just have something slightly different, you don't want to completely distort it, but you can just kind of make it feel a bit more tall or thin tin or wide or whatever you want just very simply without having to redraw everything and you also want to make sure that you have enough room at the top for your steam so if your cup is a little bit too high in your canvas go ahead and just put it lower <laughs> And then we're gonna start setting up the file for the animation. So it's gonna be a super simple animation here. I'm just showing you the basics, but go ahead and your wrench icon menu, select canvas and turn on animation assist. And in the menu that you will now see in the bottom, go ahead and click on the little icon on the left and select background. If you have a pre-textured file, make sure the icon on the right is set to foreground because the background and foreground are going to be there throughout the entire animations. Now, all the layers that we create between the cup and the textures and effect layer are going to be steam layers and those are going to uh, show up or not show up depending on the setup of the animation. So create one layer, set it to opacity somewhere around 50%, rename it to steam and you can pick whatever color you want for your steam. I'm going with a grayish color and you can draw really any shape of your choice. I'm going with something very cartoon here, but you could go with something a bit more realistic. And to animate in Procreate, you have to draw every single frame of animation. So to make something move, you're going to draw multiple frames of kind of the movement deconstructed. So, you know, kind of like when you were a kid, if you had a little flip book and you were just flipping through the pages really slow, you can see that it was almost the same image, but with a slight difference. And when you were flipping really fast, that translated to movement. So that's exactly the same thing we're doing here. And since we're drawing steam and we're just going to have something very simple, we're only going to draw two or three layers of steam. But for fluid animations, usually it would be like up to 36 frames for only one second. 
We're not going to do that though. We're just going to go with two layers. And you can see here, if you create a new layer, it adds a little vignette in the bottom. And if you click on the settings, you have multiple settings for the animation. Uh, right now, we're just not going to worry about that a lot because like I was saying, we're just drawing two layers. So set it to loop or ping pong. It literally doesn't matter here. And the frame per second is kind of the, uh, how fast the animation is going to play out. And onion skin frame, onion skin opacity. That's just to help you when you're drawing, it's not going to affect the final result. So just set it so you can bear barely see the first steam layer and then go ahead and rename your new layer to steam 2. So right now you should have the cup layer group, steam 1, steam 2 and maybe textures and effect. And on steam 2 you're just going to draw a variation of your first steam shape. So to do that I like starting my steam shape sections whatever <laughs> from the same base point but then invert the curves it's a little bit hard to explain but if you look at the video i'm sure you're gonna understand what i mean so you start from the same point on the t like the t surface and then you just kind of mirror the curve so that they're in the opposite direction one little detail that i forgot is very important is to set the opacity of your second steam layer to the same percentage as your first steam layer and now if we see, if we click on play in the menu at the bottom, it's actually going to animate our steam and it's just going to go from one layer to the other. So just like a flip book, if you adjust the frame per second to a higher number, you're going to see it's going to go super fast. Uh, for this, I like to go around four or five. It looks really good. And if you want something that is more fluid, you're just going to have to draw more steam layer so it's the same technique you would just add more steam layers but there's something really nice about this really basic animation of just a couple layers hey there it's genevieve from the future i'm editing right now and i noticed i didn't mention something very important in the video if you want to explore it the canvas needs to be fairly small so to do that if you have something that is too big go in the canvas option crop and resize and in the settings you're just going to activate this little link icon, which is going to lock the ratio of your artwork. And you're also going to select Resample Canvas. And with those two options selected, you can enter any number. I like 2500 or 2000 pixels. And that's just going to resize your canvas and make it smaller, which is going to then allow you to export it to whichever format you want. And the way to do that is in the wrench icon, select the Share menu. And you're going to select Animated mp4 and at this point you just have to click on whoops <laughs> my pencil got stuck in my hair uh, <laughs> you just have to click on the export button here at the top and then you can select save as video or just save video and it's going to save the video in your camera roll on your ipad so where you have your regular images and videos that's where it's going to be now there's another little tricky thing to keep in mind which is if you want to export for instagram the videos need to be at least three seconds long so right now we have two frames, the two layers here, no vignettes, and we've set our speed, if I can say, to four frames per second. So what that means is if we have two frames and we have four frames per second, the actual length of our video is only half a second, but we need three. So how many frames will we need? Well, if we have four frames per second and we want three seconds, we just make four times three, which is 12. And you just need to duplicate your layers, basically. And the way to duplicate layer is you swipe it towards the left and then you click on duplicate. And all you need to do then is just rearrange your layers so it alternates between Steam 1, Steam 2, Steam 1, Steam 2, Steam 1, Steam 2. And then you're ready to export and it's going to be 3 seconds long, which means you can use it on Instagram. So there you go, this was how to draw and animate a teacup with steam. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I would love to see why you guys get it. So make sure you share the results with me either on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. And don't forget to give this video a like because it really does help the channel. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe because I put out new videos every single week. I'll see you soon.